Okay. Um, so um, we um, we we have a, a mix of, of electricity generation capacity, right? That is primarily fossil fuels, right? So the the pie chart on the left is uh, our capacity to, to generate electricity, and so it's about seventy percent, you know, coal and natural gas, right? So these are, this is the these are our, our power plants, um, and it, but if you if you look at the the actual electricity that's generated, um, our coal plants and our nuclear plants are used a lot more intensively right, than say our, our natural gas plants or um, especially our, our petroleum fired plants. Right? We have some oil fired capacity in the U.S., but it almost never gets used, and there's a good chance that a lot of it will be retired, you know, within the next 15 years or so, right, because of, for environmental reasons, primarily. So, um, uh, but, but still about, uh, you know, about 70% of our, of the electricity that's generated comes from fossil fuels, right, primarily coal and natural gas. Uh, another 20% is nuclear, and then um, there's, um, you know, things like, like petroleum, you know, uh, hydro, biomass, wind, solar, all of these things. Uh, those, those account for a much smaller percentage of our electricity generation. Question. Yes. Do you have a handle on, uh, so obviously the electric generation capacity is not entirely used, and it gives us this flexibility to change out, mm -hmm. you know, the fraction of which each uh, in particular generation source makes up what's generated. Mm -hmm. Do you have an idea of what like the capacity factor is of the overall grid, and how much of the capacity we're actually using uh, overall? Uh, so the the annual capacity factor is um, I'd say the annual capacity factor is probably somewhere close to two thirds. Oh yeah, well, really, I was well I, so but that's but that's average, right? right. I mean. Well, that and, and, and yeah, um, but w what's really driving that is that there's a big chunk of capacity that we only use right. when um, when electricity demand is really high, right. and so we, we have a lot of what we call peaking plants. Right. So in PJM, for example, you know, 15 percent of all of the generation capacity is used in less than 100 hours a year, right, and so. Um, the amount of capacity that we have to have on hand for to to accommodate peak electricity demand during the summertime is fairly substantial. Um, so, um, but so so within within fuel types, um, you know, coal plants and nuclear plants tend to have higher capacity factors. Natural gas plants tend to have um, pretty low capacity factors because a lot of those are used for peak. Question: What is the hydroelectric electric drop? Because I, I know coal and nuclear they're pretty much static, and so mm -hmm. they can't vary. But wouldn't hydroelectric be the same? So not not necessarily for two reasons. Okay. One is that um, there's uh, a, a good amount of the, of the hydro generation in the Pacific Northwest is what we call run of river, which means that there's no storage. So there is very limited ability to control. Um, Control how much water passes through the dams and how much, uh, and, and therefore how much is how much electricity is generated. Right? Um, the second reason is that there is that a lot of hydro capacity where there is storage is used for uh, something called load following. Okay, and that's kind of like, um, and that's that's kind of like peaking demand. Okay, so it's not producing electricity at a constant rate all the time, but rather the electricity that it's, that, is, that is produced goes up and down, right, in response to fluctuations in demand. So that's why. Are a lot of hydro plants pumped hydro, or do they just not run and let it fill up slowly? When they're all they're, they're, so there are a lot of pumped hydro plants. The biggest hydro dams are generally not pump storage because right. you need a really big pump <laughs> or something like that. Um, so the, the, the biggest hydro dams. Um, you know, most of which are located in the Pacific Northwest, either have a sort of marginal amount of storage behind them, or are what we call run of river. Um, if you go up to Canada, on the other hand, their big hydro dams have years worth of water stored behind them. 
And so there's a big difference in the way that Canada and the U.S. operate their big hydro plants. And just having a dam doesn't imply storage. Right. You have to pump it the other way. Too. You would either have to pump it the other way or you'd have to have a big reservoir behind the dam. Okay. Um,